part of, not the entirety thereof, of the mystery of the uh, parabolic telescope is that we're talking about incoherent light. Now, obviously, a pinprick of starlight falling on a single spot on a uh, parabolic dish of a reflector uh, telescope is not necessarily accurate since we're talking about incoherent light. It is falling at every single point like a holographic paradigm and they are being concentrated to a single point. So we're talking about uh, incoherent light. I don't know if you know about much about coherent light or the case of a laser. What would be the difference between a 60 watt laser and these 60 watt light bulbs which are illuminating my ugly face? The 60 watt laser, depending on the frequency used, would burn right through me in about a half a second, all the way through me, a big gaping hole. It would kill me instantly, yet I can sit underneath these 60 watt fluorescent tubes all day long and only end up with dry eyes. <laughs> dry eyes! Do you even understand or do you think anybody ever taught you what light actually was? Now, something prophetic that was said by Walter Russell, and Walter Russell never defined a field, and I digitized all his works, by the way, is that light doesn't move. He wrote an interesting little book called The Secret of Light. Now, if someone with a classical education, and this means a brainwashed moron, just like everybody out there, don't take offense at that, were to read that, they would scoff and close the book and throw it in the garbage can. The notion that light does not move has not only been put forward by um, Walter Russell, but uh, also by uh, Eric Dollard. That guy does nothing but live to experiment and read classical field theory. The notion that anything emits light is an absolute ridiculous absurdity. If you think that a closed, now of course they're filled with argon, a closed and vacuum sealed glass tube like a conventional light bulb actually emits light, then you're brainwashed like everybody else. Well, I turn it on and it emits light. No, then you're ignorantly assuming that if someone were to go into the middle of a large pond and start flapping their arms and the waves started lapping on the shore and hitting your little toenails there, that the person is emitting something. What has the person done that's in the middle of a placid pond and they start flapping their arms like they're drowning? What we actually have here is the medium that they're in, which would be the water. The waves are like pistons. Of course, pistons in your car don't move. They reciprocate up and down off the crankshaft, but the pistons don't actually move in the longitudinal fashion in which the car moves. No. Waves don't move either. The only actually time that waves do move is when they actually hit the shore and a few other instances where the actual shoreline starts to shallow and then the waves do actually move, but waves don't move either. Waves actually cause another a bulk of waves to move and on and on down the line, but the waves themselves do not move. If you think that anything emits light, then you're as brainwashed as I was at an early age and everybody else. Nothing emits light. We can go further down that rabbit hole and say that light does not exist, because if we can only define light by what it does, then the concept of light as expressed by human ignorance as a subject cannot exist. I've given the analogy of Bob. If Bob were to stop walking, then Bob vanished, then can we actually say that Bob ever exists? If we only define something by what it does and not by what it is, then therefore the principality or the subject or the denotation of what we refer to in the subject in reference to light certainly cannot exist. When we speak of light, we speak of a frequency, we speak of a wavelength, we speak of an intensity. In lumens or watts or lux, it doesn't matter the measurement used, all of those are human contrivances of measure, just like time. Time, of course, itself does not exist. A shadow doesn't exist either, nor does the emptiness. We've reified these concepts as things that actually exist. When I say the word unicorn, you have this idea of a stupid horse in your head with one horn, but we all know that unicorns don't exist. When I say the word like emptiness or light or time and space, we have concepts, images in our brain of things that actually exist, but they certainly don't exist. There is certainly, of course, no such thing as emptiness. This sort of nihilistic, uh, neo-zen uh, stuff that actually came out of, uh, out of uh, Japan, this uh, nihilistic ritualism that postulates uh, stuff like achieving emptiness. I translate ancient Pali and Romanized Sanskrit. There's no such thing as emptiness or shunya 
or sunyata, doesn't matter if you want to use Pali or Sanskrit, these are descriptors of something that's devoid of something else. Something is empty of something else. You can say that Alaska is uh, empty of palm trees, or you know, someone's head is uh, empty of intelligence, but emptiness is not a thing in itself, of itself, or by itself, nor is it a principle or subject. If someone says, ah, I went into meditation, I experienced emptiness, you experienced emptiness, huh? I love it when people say, I found emptiness or I experienced emptiness. I used to see those sort of pathetically ignorant comments all the time. It's like, well, if you're actually in emptiness and you're actually, you know, I recall being in emptiness, then it wasn't empty. What do you mean by that? Well, subject precedes the object of negation. Therefore, we can say that you certainly did not achieve emptiness, nor did you even experience it. Well, sure I did. Well, who was the person that experienced it? Well, I was. Okay, so you were in emptiness, right? Yeah, I was, therefore it wasn't empty. What do you mean? Well, I was, you were in there. How empty was it if you had experience of it and recollection of it? You also reified something that doesn't even exist. You tried to give uh, definition and parameter to something that actually has no existence whatsoever. Something is empty of something else. There's no such thing as emptiness, nor time, nor shadow. A shadow, of course, is a privation of light. A shadow is not a thing in itself, of itself, by itself. It has no principality nor subjectivity. The concept of light is uh, no different than time, space, a shadow, and emptiness. Light itself does not exist. Well, sure it does. Everybody knows that light exists. I mean, light's what's hitting your ugly face right now from those light bulbs. No, that's a field perturbation. The field perturbation manifests, i.e. is reflected off my face and gives it tonality which goes into the camera which hits the sensor because of the resistance. Everything in the universe is capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity. If my self was not here, there would be no manifestation of that field perturbation which is by its definition resistance. Nothing emits light, period. Sure, light has travels too. We know that light travels X number of hundreds of thousands of miles a second. Yeah, sure. No, that's a rate of induction. That's the rate of maximum rate of induction of a frequency with a longitudinal pulse perturbation and transverse electrical magnetic components, which give rise to the rate of induction due to the frequency. Any frequency, for that matter. If something has a spatial footprint or a transverse, i.e., the right hand rule. I don't know if you know what the right-hand rule is. Partakes of the right-hand rule of propagation and has a transverse component, i.e. a spatiality, then it must partake of a rate of induction. That which we call the uh, field perturbation or the maximum rate of induction or quote-unquote the speed of light is not a speed at all. It's simply a rate of induction. Light does not exist. Nothing emits light. Something sets up through the release of energy, transference of energy, and that's what's happening. You know, the light is plugged into the wall socket. The wall socket is uh, connected to the power lines. Power lines connected to the generator. The generator is burning coal. It's burning uh, nuclear. It's the change of one form of energy into another. And that energy I desire to manifest as a field perturbation, which we call light. But light is merely a concept. Light does not exist. Nothing emits light. If we can only define something by what it does, and if it stops doing that, like Bob walking. Well, Bob's walking around, Bob stopped, and then he vanishes. Well, Bob doesn't exist. If we can only define something by its attribute, in this case we can say that light and illumination are one and the same thing, correct? And we could actually take it back and... Ultimately, using platonic retroduction, I actually state that illumination itself is purely conceptual as well. We're talking about uh, transformation of energy. It's certainly so. Nothing emits light. Your camera does not, uh, you know, have photon. And also, the notion of a photon is purely an arbitrary concept with zero basis in reality. There is absolutely no such thing as a photon. A photon is the misapprehension of the actual nature, the coaxial nature of light which is a longitudinal pulse perturbation with transverse electrical magnetic um, constituents, which actually define the frequency and the nature of light. Here's a quick trick question. What's the difference between x-rays and uh, visible light and radio waves and UV? There is no difference. They're all one and the same thing with different frequencies. Higher the frequency, the smaller the spatial footprint, the higher the power. Energy equals nu V. Energy from a frequency of light equals Planck's constant times the frequency. Literally, the smaller the frequency and the smaller the spatial footprint, which, of course, goes along with what Dollard and Tesla and 
And James Kirk Maxwell and Oliver Heaviside said is that the smaller the space, the higher the capacitance, and of course this is the case. And then, of course, we're talking about counter space. Here, in which the case we have a smaller container is able to hold more stuff. Contrary to conventional existential logic and perceptions of pathetic humanity, a larger box holds more crap. Or in the case of field theory, we actually have the inverse of that, where a smaller box is able to hold more energy. But by that, we only imply that it's able to tap off more energy from counter space, i.e. inertia or the ether. What you call it doesn't make any difference. Mother Nature doesn't give a shit if stupid human creatures refer to it as ether, inertia, or counter space. None of that matters. It is what it is. Naming it doesn't mean anything. That we give rationalization and conceptualization to something that doesn't exist like light, which does not exist by definition, if we apply hardcore platonic retroductive logic, does not enlighten the pathetic average human creature. They, of course, reaffirm light. Since they see it, it reflects off things, but they have no idea what the hell light is. You know, the quickest way to trip up a professor or a physicist, and I dare you to ask them this, just say, you know, light slows down depending on the type of glass it is. Slows down, and slows down is also incorrect, but they'll accept that part. Slows down by about 30% when it enters glass. And then when it leaves that glass, it speeds back up again. Now, without breaking the law of conservation of energy, since there's nothing inside light that says, we're leaving the glass, stick on, the, stick on your foot on the gas pedal and release more energy and speed back up, the only way you could actually answer that question is through the ether, through inertia, through counter space. There's only one way on this earth to answer how light is able to of course, I've already refuted light, and I refuted that light has a speed. There's only one way to answer the phenomena which we call light and what it does after it leaves that glass, where it returns to its quote-unquote speed, which is actually a rate of induction. And that is through what I've explained in my book and explained in countless other videos, is that there's no such entity as light. Nothing emits light. It is a field perturbation. It is literally the nature of the field, that perturbation, and the rate of induction relative to capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity of the medium through which it is being disturbed. Because glass has a certain capacitance and resistance, we think of this glass as an insulator, but is also a capacitor, as even the Massachusetts Institute of Technology has proven. All you have to do is ask uh, some idiot, some moron, some brain-dead, mental midget, knuckle-dragging, subhuman, monobrow goon that calls themselves a professor. Explain how light, quote-unquote, speeds back up after it leaves. They are guaranteed to either laugh at you or not answer you or give you the most absurd, illogical BS answer that anybody with half a brain could ever think of getting. Like, what the hell did you just say? They can't answer it. They can't answer it. And I have no problem with people that are ignorant, so I just don't know. There's nothing wrong with ignorance. The problem I have is with these assholes with degrees that pretend to know everything and teach people the crap that they think they understand. It's just a big pack of BS. It's just all it is. It's okay not to know. But the problem is, is that when someone thinks they know the answer to something, they don't go looking for that answer. That is so... it applies to everything in life, too. If you think you know the answer to something, you will not go looking for the answer to that thing because you think you already know it. And that just makes you a pig-headed dumbass, just as anybody else, especially these professors, these uh, pathetic little know -it. I've got a degree, boy! Yeah, a degree, you know. Do papers, papers are for dogs, not for human beings. You know, I got a degree on the wall, boy! Yeah, all that means is that uh, they got a degree by agreeing with the assholes who taught them the same sort of bull, bull crap that they're teaching you. Their degree doesn't mean anything. It does not mean anything. It means something to stupid people, but intelligent and wise people specifically, it doesn't mean a damn thing. Try to ask them that question about light leaving glass, because it will, their answer will either not answer or they'll turn around and not answer you, or ignore you, scoff at you. Well, they'll give you an answer that breaks the law of conservation of energy. There's only one way to answer the phenomena of light, since light is not a thing and light does not have a speed. There's only one way in this entire universe to answer that question. 
and that is vis-a-vis -vis inertia, ether, counter space, doesn't matter what you call it, and uh, field perturbations. Because everything are fields, and fields are not particles. Well, the, when the photons leave the glass, it pushes off the glass like a spring. I've actually heard some professors say this sort of crap. As people say, I, I, I asked my professor that thing you told me to ask him, and they said when the light leaves the glass, it like pushes off of it, and it speeds back. If you don't understand why that is a BS answer from the pits of hell, then you don't have enough brain cells to even breathe and keep yourself alive. This, folks, is what translating ancient Greek and having a sharp mind will do for you. In which case, someone will reply, is that why you're covered in tattoos? <laughs> that doesn't matter. Lux e veritas. If you like these videos, you always click the link below. Tell me to jump off a cliff, whatever makes you happy. Fini.